So the main reason escaping side control is so difficult is you can't just use one escape. There's so many different control variations and each one requires a different style of escape. So if you go into side expecting to use one move, it often doesn't work because your opponent's shifting. So this video, I'm gonna go through the main six ways of escaping side control, and then I'm gonna show you how to put them all together into an all-encompassing side control escape system. The additional benefit to this is, if you get your side escape good enough, not only is it great to get out of side control, but it becomes very difficult to pass your guard in the first place because they can never properly establish side control on you. So before we go into the main five escapes, I wanna show two core principles that's gonna help in most every situation. The first one is what I refer to as the bowl concept. So you imagine if you had a book and you laid a sheet of paper on top of it, it lays flush to the book, right? But if you lay a sheet of paper over top of a bowl, there's going to be a huge gap underneath. And it's the same way inside. If he comes down and I leave my head down flat, I'm very much stuck here. It's hard to move. He's very heavy, right? But just by pulling my body tight position like a bowl, it creates a gap that's much harder to get to. So as he comes in here, I'm like this. This makes it so much easier to find space to get the knee in, makes it easier if I wanted to turn into a double leg or whatever I want to do. I want to always be trying to keep the core tight. Don't have your head and hip on the floor laying like a book. So the second principle here is somewhat related. I just refer to it as hip attachment. And it's basically the idea that wherever one side of your hip goes, the other side goes. So a lot of people will be here and they're tight and they're trying to get this knee in and they leave this leg on the floor, which makes it hard to get your knee in. It's hard to move, right? So if I lift this leg up in the air straight, it brings my core tight. It makes the bowl easier to make and it makes it easier to move. And this is true in open guard retention if someone's passing and side escape just in general. If one leg's down, the other one's hard to bring up. So always be, even if I'm bringing this knee in, I lift this leg straight up or if I bring this knee in, I lift this leg straight up. It's going to make it much easier to be tight. So we're gonna start with escaping the classic side controls. There's two main styles of this. There's a high side control, where he's controlling more my upper body and pinning my shoulders. And then there's a low side control, where he's a little more down low uh, pinning my hips. And these require two different styles of escape. We're gonna focus on the high one first. So the main thing with the high one is we're gonna focus on a method where we're trying to basically push him above the shoulder. So we wanna get him to go above us. Because if when he's high, if we try to press him down, you know, I'm either gonna get stuck in the middle or he's just gonna end up in a low hip pin and that doesn't get me out either. So here are the main ways to do this. There's a few different details. One, a lot of people push with their hand here. I wanna focus on my forearm under the neck because my hand and my shoulders, this bends and collapses. You're very weak. When I use the forearm, it's very strong. From my elbow to my shoulder, does it bend? So I can get a nice lift under his chin like this, right? My far elbow is also very important. Here, I like to frame under on the far rib. A lot of people, what they do is they try to focus on this hip and then they start shrimping. You can go around on that other side, yep. They start shrimping, but the problem with this is he can now follow me because I'm pressing him downward with this arm as he follows, right? So what I instead want to focus on is my elbow blocking the far side rib. A good way to see this is just without a partner is that imagine my opponent's here. What I want to do is scoop my elbow under him. So this is him. I want to get my elbows under to try to lever him up above me and that's going to give me space to get my knee in. So what that looks like is just imagine his hip ribs right here. Instead of blocking here, I do this scraping motion here. So now as his weight drops on me, I'm blocking the far side. This like gives me an upward pressure. So now this arm, I frame the neck here. He can get in tighter now, right? I like to grab some material here so I can't push this arm above my head like this. And now I may shrimp out a little bit and I'm gonna lift my leg uh, high like this, like I talked about before, keeping my core tight. And now it's easy to slide my knee in. Once I get my knee in, there's two main escapes. If he doesn't have a, like a hand clasp or a tight grip, I can usually use my knee to push, use my outside leg over and reset the guard. But once I get my knee in, I can push him, right? The other one is, if he keeps his hands clasped here, yeah, like this, I can't go to the chest immediately. So I'll come to his hip. And now with my uh, knee on the bottom hip, I can push out here, keep your hand clasped, right? And now I can get space. I put my foot on the hip. I use this hand under the elbow and I slide out here and I can come out. A um, couple common uh, issues here people can have is they start to bring this knee in and they go all the way through. But if you go all the way through with this knee here, I get stuck. Cause just like with the arm from here to here bends with the leg here to here bends. But when I push with this, it won't bend. So if I get just the top of my knee in, it's a very strong 
uh, wedge to push him off, right? Whereas when I go here, he collapses in and you kind of get stuck and repassed all the time, right? So here, right, again, he's really tight. I use the elbows here, shrimp out if I need, lift the core tight, start trying to swing the knee in. If his hands aren't clasped, I can push off, try to lasso if his hands are clasped, knee on the hip, hand on the hip, foot comes in sideways. I usually dip this and start working out. One additional detail that's really important is sometimes when I'm here, I lift the leg to get the knee in. Of course you can tap the floor, but sometimes when you tap the floor, you lose a little elbow knee space. So a great way to create space without tapping the floor is to kick your leg in the air. I call it a flutter kick like this, because you get the space without having to open the hip back up like this, right? And sometimes I do it multiple times until I can get out. A good way to practice it is if even if no one's here and I'm on the floor, you should get to a point that you can actually jump up in the air with it like this. And when you can create that ability to lift up in the air, then you can create a lot of movement to get your knee back in. So now we're gonna look at the low side control situation. This one's a lot different because if I have the only model as I scrape them above here, you're gonna try to get your elbows in the right position and it just won't work. And this is why in jujitsu you always have to choose the right move for the situation. You can't force the move you want. So now I detect he's lower. So in this case, instead of scraping him above the shoulders, we're gonna push him below the hips. We're gonna press him downward, right? So in this case, a lot of the classic stuff you may have learned before, like pushing on this hip here and pushing on the head is actually gonna work. So in this case, I usually go hand on the head. You can use the form, but ultimately if I can get my hand, uh, hand right on the chin here, I get a nice downward push. If you go around this side, this hand here, I'm just gonna frame on his near side hip. Normally this wouldn't work if they're high, but here, all I do is I put both feet on the floor and I start scooting out like this, right? Now, which way you go can depend on like kind of their weight. Sometimes I go here and then I start wiggling here and I just keep adjusting like this, right? Eventually you get him low enough, you can start bringing your knees out. It'll depend. Sometimes I bring the top knee out into the shin and I can use this kind of as a wedge to try to center up. Sometimes I'll come out and I get the top or the bottom knee in, push, and then I kind of bring this foot out. So it may vary. The main thing is you'll feel it when you're here, get a little bit tighter, right? You'll feel it when you're here. Once you lock them down, they can't progress up, right? So again, I can use both feet on the floor. I still stay in that tight crunch, but in this case, I can't even lift my legs. So they're better on the floor. So I start moving like this, bringing the knee out and escaping here. Sometimes on this one, it's possible you can go out here and depending on where their arm is, I can shift and go behind this one. Marcelo Garcia used to use this one a lot here and press and come up. Uh, again, I'm gonna cover the main variations. There's even more that I'm gonna show, but the main idea is when they're low, if you focus on pushing them downward and sliding up with your feet on the floor, you're gonna find an easy way to start creating options to get out. All right, so now we're gonna start talking about when your opponent does the hip switch. So what happens here is you start doing your classic side and now go ahead and switch your hip he switches into a control like this, and now the escape pattern is completely different, okay? So this one is usually gonna happen when they're a little bit higher on you. If they're low on you, go back up to the side. If they're low on you and they try to do the hip switch here, they're so far out, you can kind of continue with the same kind of escape. The real problem with the hip switch, go around this side here, yeah, is that when they switch, go ahead and switch, it's your elbow gets stuck out like this. Now if my elbow's out, I have no way to fight and I can't move and it's a very difficult escape to get or position to get out of. So go back up. So again, if we focus first on getting good frames with our elbow low, blocking the far side, what's gonna happen is as he switches, go ahead and switch. As he switches, I want my elbow to track on the inside. So you see how my forearm here is blocking his rib cage or his far hip. It'll depend on where he is. It's gonna be a, a bit adjusting depending on their position. But the main idea is I'm still protecting that space like I talked about where I scrape, right? I wanna protect that space. As long as I'm here, sometimes I'll grab some fabric like this or the belt, whatever I can get. And I just keep it wedged in there like that. From here, there's two main styles of escape. It'll depend on how he's positioned. If he has his body weight on the floor, so just leave your, yeah, if he has his body weight on the floor, a bridge won't really do anything, okay? But that elbow wedged in his ribs or his hip, what I do is I take my foot out here, I'm gonna start doing what's called a forward shrimp. A normal shrimp is this. Forward shrimp, we turn our hip away, I put my small toes on the floor, and now I pull my hip away. And my elbow here blocks him from following, as long as his hips are on the floor. It functions like a jack, right? So now here he stays tight, and I do it one more time and I get all this space. And now again, I lift the core tight, bring my core tight, start bringing the knee in, and I can start working to escape, right? So again, we're here, he switches the hip in, I start blocking here, forward shrimp. You may need to do it two or three times, bring the core tight, 
seat core really tight, bring the knee in, and I start working my way out. Next situation here is as I start trying to do this, he starts loading his body weight on me. Now, no matter how much I shrimp, right? No matter how much I shrimp here, he's going to stay loaded on me, okay? So in this case, this is where the bridge is going to work. Now, the thing with the bridge, just like the previous one, if my arm's not in a good position, this bridge isn't going to do anything. He's going to stay on me, right? But go back up. But as long as I keep my elbow in the right spot, when he does the switch, my elbow stays on his ribs or far hip. If you can come in close here, you can see this. Right? See how my elbow's here? Substantially different than being out here, right? So I have this wedge. Now, as I go, he follows, but now look, I'm gonna load up a bridge. What I do is I bring my toes close to my butt and I'm gonna bridge up and I use my elbow to flare him up. Depending on your opponent, some will stay tight and you can roll them. Most people who are experienced, they're gonna catch their balance like that. We can lift our core tight and start bringing our knee in and start trying to escape, right? In the case that, just keep holding tight there, right? And then you'll back up a little bit because we're gonna go into you, right? If he stays really like that, see, he naturally he posted his hand, which is what they should do, right? But if they don't post their hand, you will roll them over sometimes. Most people have enough experience to let go and post, but understand when they let go and do that post, that's giving you the room for your hips to work to start pressing and moving back out to an escape. I also want to mention this more classic head and arm style control. It's not commonly used at a high level, but beginners will use it. And if you don't know how to get out, super annoying. I started in judo, so knowing how to escape from this was critical. So the main two mechanisms to threaten here is the roll and the back take. So if your opponent leaves this leg available, often if I can just hook this here, it's just a matter of time until you can dig this out. They can be annoying, hold really tight here. They can be annoying, but once you get this, you can slowly peel your way out here, peel the arm up and work your way towards the back, right? Even if I can't exactly get that twister hook, just catching this and locking here, it's just a matter of time until you work your way out towards the back. But what often starts happening here is I chase to get this, he's gonna circle up high, right? So I start going that way and then I bridge up and roll, right? And the way we do that is we just C cup here, I chase and that projects his weight up high onto the shoulders. And now I carry that momentum and I'm gonna load my toes and I bridge up here and that drops his weight above me. I roll over the shoulder and take him over. This looks like it's like a big muscle move, but I've done this to people like 200 plus pounds before. It's just a good timing thing, right? So again, I go for this, he stays up high. I can't bridge up roll over and come up. Again, if you try to roll them and then they post out or let go, even if you don't roll them, they gave you space and you can try to get back out with normal escape methods. So this next one is probably one of the most annoying side control variations, which is they put their hand on the near side hip. This is really frustrating because I can't bring my knee in. If his hand is on the other side, go back to normal, yeah, then I can always find a way to try to get this knee in eventually. When the hand's here, no amount of shrimping and bridging is gonna get that in, right? So this escape is one of my most effective escapes. I've used this in there's so many world-class black belts and world-class competition. Uh, so a lot of people, they get worried about getting your back taken when you do this. If you do it right, it's pretty safe. So what I start doing is first off, he has to be tight initially. If he's not tight, if he's up here like this, I'll usually just frame and I can actually bring my knee directly in front of the bicep here. Now I extend it downward and feed this foot. Okay, they're not gonna let you do that. I'm gonna show the rest of the escape in a second. But when they're really tight, they won't allow you to do that. So what we're gonna do is try to force it a little more. So he stays really tight with his cross face, right? I'm gonna stay here. I frame on this neck a little bit and I'm gonna take my arm and I come around here in front, okay? I'm not gonna commit too far like this because I do risk a back take or maybe a Kimura, okay? But again, if he's staying really tight, he doesn't have much wiggle room. So I get my elbow just in front a little bit here. Now here, I can use this elbow for support. This takes a little bit of practice to get good at, right? And I start bringing this knee really tight to my elbow, right? What I'm doing is because I can't connect the elbow and knee on the inside, I'm doing it on the outside. Now my left toes go on the floor, like the small toes there, and you have to really master this forward shrimp motion. This one takes a little bit of practice. And I start doing this. See how I keep bringing the foot really close like this to try to bring this back in. Once I get this knee back in the bicep here, now I can start to come back more towards the normal side. If he leaves his arm there like this, right? What I'll do is I can just let him cross face, it's no problem. I just start extending this down and feeding this left foot into the armpit. Once I get it in the armpit here, it's actually very sticky. If he tries to bring his arm back, I can just keep, ele see the more he brings it back, the more he elevates and loses his pressure and I can start to work out, right? So going down again, 
So we're here, right? Again, initially, I always want to threaten this first. So he's got to stay super, super, super tight, which doesn't give him the ability to go for the back and all that stuff. I come through just a little bit here and I stay like this. There's not really a ton of attacks here, so you can be kind of patient with this, right? And I start trying to wedge that knee in. Once I wedge the knee in, I can use this hand to block the cross face a little more and I start feeding this foot. Once I feed the foot, I'll start elevating. If he tries to stay super tight down here like this, you can just keep elevating, blocking the neck, and eventually you start getting your core tight and you can start working your way out. So this last one is the one that I think gives people the hardest time. Certainly a lot of my students have struggled with it. But before I show the escape to it, if you guys are enjoying the content, be sure to like and leave a comment to help support the channel. So what often happens here is after you've boxed out all the other controls, your opponent will start shifting this top arm over your head and they can either stay in some uh, side control variation here or they start switching up to a north-south control. And now this arm cannot frame at all. It's very frustrating, right? So go back. So the big thing here, uh, go back to the original side, yeah, is uh, this video we're highly focused on preventative measures early rather than mega deep positions. There is positions within side where they're too deep and we'll talk about that later, uh, but this is more preventative, right? So what happens here is when we're in the base side, I know they're gonna do that. That's one of the most common things they do. So as he starts to do that shift, my hand feeds under into the armpit. And if you know it's coming, it's very easy to time, right? So we'll do that in slow motion one time here. What we're gonna do is as he goes, my hand feeds and I slide up to the form. You can't push with the wrist, just like when we're framing. If I go here, it's gonna collapse my elbows. My elbows get hurt super easy in those kind of positions. So I have to frame more with the form, right? You have to find somewhere in between. If I go a little too high, it might go up. Right? But if I go a little too low, even if it's the forearm, it can collapse. So I want somewhere in between a little more towards the elbow. So now he can't distribute his weight down here, okay? So what happens here is if he just stays here, I can keep that frame and now I can start sliding my knee in, lifting my core tight, and it almost works just like a side escape. But usually what's gonna happen is he's gonna switch to the north south. So I go back, start from the beginning. Okay, so we're here like this. So he starts to go over, I feed here, and now the, exactly. And what I do, you see how my right arm here raced to his shoulder here, right? So go on that side down there. See, I raced to the shoulder. So put your hand back where it was and then we'll do that. So let's see, I, I know he's gonna do this shift. So as he goes, I race here. And see, now I've got both elbows blocking his shoulder. So now as he drops his weight down, drop your weight down, I have a frame here. And see, as I move, I slide away. Now I lift that leg straight, my knee can slide in, keep getting tight here. And now I have a knee pressure to work in, I can start feeding the foot and start working my way out, right? So again, if they get mega deep, it's a different thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we wanna be good at the shift, right? So I'm here, he goes over there, boom, I race in there like that, see? Now I do a forward shrimp and I even lunge out more so that he can't get his weight down. So he starts driving and see, I just pick whichever side's easiest. In this case, it was the opposite side. The knee comes in and now no matter how tight he tries to get, my knee is really strong here, keep getting tight. See, I can push with the knee, the foot comes out and now I can start working my way to escape. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit both about escaping deeper side control positions and how to develop this skill set in general. So uh, escaping deeper side control positions, for example, let's say I'm inside and both of my arms are fully isolated. I'll do videos on this eventually, uh, but most of the time these positions occur because people don't accept they're getting passed early. And how that ends up looking is like, let's say I'm playing open guard, I have a sleeve, you do whatever grip, right? Understand when you have a grip, you don't have a frame. If I have a frame and he starts passing, he starts coming all the way into side, I can get my frames in early. I'm not gonna be like this, right? So I can go, oh man, I'm really in trouble, switch into the frames and you, you have a good fight early. And, a lot, and if you get good at this, the guy can't even pass in the first place, right? But what a lot of people do wrong is they have some guard they wanna play, they learn the technique, whatever, and they hold the stuff, the guy gets all the way in and now way late they start fighting and now I'm, all of my frames are gone, right? So pay way close attention to the early framing to block these things. And I will do a future video on how to get out of some of the deeper positions back to your core frames. But these core frames are both your ability to escape and stop the pass in the first place. So now talking about how to really develop this skill set, 
as I said in the beginning, the hard thing with escaping sight is when you start doing one escape, they're gonna shift control. You're gonna start one, they switch your hip. You start blocking that, they try to go arm over the head. In the beginning, it's a lot to learn. It's like if you're doing boxing and I tell you dodge the punch, that's easy to say, but at first you just get hit and then you have to learn to time it, right? So I think the easiest way to develop this is to start and tell your partner that you're training with to only stay in one particular side control. So for example, if I'm going with Espen here, right? And he's in a high side. What's often going to happen is, is if I start to have some amount of success, he's just going to shift his hip, for example, to this. And if you're new to this, it's like, okay, now you have to remember how to do this. So first, what you want to do is tell him to stay here and he's not allowed to shift, right? So he's not allowed to change his control. And if you can do this and you can start getting your knee in, throw the lasso over, go foot on hip, and you start getting out, then you know you can do that one. Then you progress to starting with him on the low hip position and you isolate that. And then even with like the, the hip switch, you know, isolate the, he's on the floor, he's loaded on you. And then you can go, okay, you can be either on the floor or on me, but you can't shift out of that. And you can start isolating the exact shifts because a lot of the battle to escape side is in those shifts. And it's like a cat and mouse game. You start one escape, they shift. Usually if you escape the first one well, when they shift, you'll be a step ahead in the next one and you learn to go through. So my recommendation is isolate these things by parts. As you get good at each one, slowly start integrating them into a mixed thing. And what you'll find is once you get really good at escaping all these side control variations, it's almost impossible for people to pass you in the first place because every time you're in trouble, you just bring your frames in and start focusing on the escape. So this was a huge video. I'm enjoying doing these more broad videos like this, but if you guys want to see more detailed content where I get really into the details on specific positions, be sure to check out my second YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. I do a lot more in-depth breakdowns and more high volume content on there. And as always, if you guys like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.